making some content. So I know most of you guys have a phone and a lot of you guys always ask me, what am I using when you guys see those really cool videos with the blur? Um, this is one of those cameras. I have a couple of them. But what I really wanted to go over today was what you should use and when, why you should use it, the different types of lighting that you can use, and the various different types of cameras that you can buy and use. Because right now, this is a Sony and I'm being filmed on a Canon. So we'll actually get into the different brands and different things that you may want to pick up in the future if fitness is something that you want to do. Or maybe you own some other sort of business, but you just like the way the fitness stuff looks and you've been interested in what type of equipment everyone's using to make all those really, really cool videos. So it's not just about making the cool video, it's making your videos stand out because once they stand out, people know that you're serious. And then once you are serious, obviously it makes more people wanna follow you, it makes more people want to buy your stuff, it makes more people a little bit more confident in you because you're taking this much more seriously. Um, it's like, you know, you would never go to the racetrack and race some other cars with just a Honda Civic if everyone else is out there racing on Ferraris. So honestly, this is probably a Honda Civic and this is like a Ferrari. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over all this, we're actually gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna work out, we're gonna talk about the different areas of the gym that make me look better than other areas of the gym. And then again, we're gonna get over, we're gonna get into all of these things. And one of the big reasons I wanted to make this video was actually for my coaches in the gym because I've been wanting to have a meeting with them to actually show them exactly how I want the content to be. Not necessarily how all content should be, but how I want it to be. Um, and then all the little things that I don't like, all the things that I do like, and then things that I kind of want them to kind of just do on the fly and kind of understand, you know, what little flair they're allowed to put into it and different things like that. But I also own a social media marketing agency and I get people all the time who sign up and we run marketing for their ads. And it's kind of nice to even just like have something for them to see and be like, hey, like, look at this video. Here's a lot of the things that I'm looking for. And I think that this is just gonna be a great video for people who just not only want to have better content for their business, but it's gonna be good for my employees. It's gonna be good for some of the people that I have relationships with in the social media marketing agency. It's just gonna be, it's just gonna be a great video. Plus we're in California, IA, sun's shining, and we're gonna go to one of the coolest gyms in the whole world. Who wouldn't wanna do that? You get a new truck? A fucking Ford Ranger? Give me a little flex. No, no, no. Let's get a good picture. That's a little booty flex in there. No, no, no. Let's like. Oh, we'll do it. Get in front of the car. Like the mixtape picture. Yeah. So now we're in the gym, and this is the camera that I use every day inside the gym. So if you guys follow Chalk Performance Training, my gym's Instagram, or you ever see me on my Instagram inside this gym doing a bunch of just kind of swipe style videos, this is the camera that I'm using. So the lens, if you guys can see it f1.8 and 55 millimeter. The f1.8 is probably what you guys are gonna want inside the gym because it's gonna give you the most blur in the background and having that 55 millimeter is gonna be a fixed millimeter length so you guys can't do any zooming or anything like that. But I'm telling you right now, if you guys have a Sony camera, this is the lens that you guys are gonna want. This is a Zeiss one, that's the brand, Zeiss. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive. And when I say a little bit, it's probably about five times more expensive than the regular standard, I think it's a Sigma lens. So this lens is about, I wanna say it's like $1,500. And then there is a cheaper version with, that gives you almost the exact same specs and it's like $200. So if you're a little bit light on cash, I would get the $200 version. Honestly, you're not gonna see a huge difference. And then also this camera right here, this is a Sony a7 III. There's an a7 I, there's an a7 II. There's all sorts of different types of frames that you can get, but what's important is the full frame or a crop sensored lens, not lens, uh, sensor inside the camera. So I like to get the full frame because what's gonna happen is it's gonna, when it gets sized down, it gives you better quality. And if you ever wanna take this camera out and take really cool photos, it's nice to have the full frame lens. So maybe that's a little bit over your head right now, but when you guys go and look for cameras, it will be something that will come up It'll be something that the person at the store asks you about. Just get the full frame. Just like make a, make a commitment, make the investment, and just get the best stuff that you can. But what's most important for sure is the lens. And if you're gonna be inside, you want that really cool blur, get a f1.8 and get the 55 mil. If you want really good volume, you're gonna want some sort of device like this. Um, you guys, sometimes you see like the big fuzzy things, and you know, those are cool. They're really good for blocking wind and all that. 
Uh, but the roadie one, this particular one is the pro one. It's the more expensive one. You can just go to the guy and say, hey, I want the most expensive roadie one, which is only $300. But what I like about this one is as soon as you turn the camera on, it automatically turns on the mic. So all the other ones, you have to turn the mic on separately. But this one turns on automatically as soon as you turn it on, as long as it's charged. So it's like dummy proof. That's what I really like about this one. And then the one step down is like $150. So it's really a $150 difference. To me, it's not worth it to spend $150 less and get something that I might forget to even turn it on, which we're all gonna forget at some point. Um, so that's, that's the camera that I like to use for the gym. Right now, again, you guys are being filmed on a Canon because my friend Nick likes to use a Canon and we'll go over Canon stuff later. But what I want you guys to understand too is you're probably thinking right now, okay, man, he's got this really cool camera. It's probably really hard to use. This is Emily right here. Hey guys. <laughs> she does all of the videos for me inside the gym and she will attest that it's pretty easy to use, don't you think? It's very, very simple. All the members think I'm just a great photographer, but really it's the camera making everyone look great. So really all you have to do is just press a couple buttons to focus in, press the record button. But what makes it really, really good versus mediocre is the person. When Emily first started, she wasn't great at it. She didn't like doing it. There was a lot of things about it that were not ideal. But as you get into it and you watch other people's videos like this one, or you watch my Instagram or someone else's Instagram that you really like a lot, you start to notice that there's a certain way that they move as they're filming. And that movement is so, so important. Like, if I'm gonna do a squat, what's important to film? Your butt and your thighs. Yeah, angle. yeah. You wanna get in there, you wanna get the booty, you wanna get the thighs. Um, obviously, you wanna see the entire movement, right? Somebody might do that same thing and be like, I'm just gonna get the, the booty and the quads. And then that's when it's like too much. You're like, dude, I hate Instagram, I'm deleting this app. But if you get like, you know, an angle where you see the whole movement, you're far enough away where you can see the entire bar, you can see the entire person, you can see the vibe of the gym that they're in, the place that they're in, and then you make some nice little attributes, right? You guys have a dating app out there, you don't just take a picture of just straight up your butt, you take a picture of your entire body, but you're like, you got the, you got the angle, you know what I mean? You gotta like, you gotta get it all in there. <laughs> um, so yeah, once you make all that, and you make all that nice and sexy, then it comes down to making a thumbnail, making a caption, and we'll get into that later. All right guys, this is the Canon camera. I've been being shot on this the entire video so far. This is the first time that we're on my Sony camera. And this particular camera is a 2470 millimeter, whereas mine is a 55 millimeter. This one, you can manipulate the depth, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. A little bit more options on this. It's also a f2.8, so you're not gonna get as much blur as you would with my camera. You guys can probably see what's going on right now with the blur on this camera right now. The nice thing about this is, you have different options, whereas mine is just gonna be that one blur. You're not gonna be able to zoom in, zoom out. The other thing that's nice about the Canon is when you flip the screen out, you can actually see yourself if you want as a vlog. So this is nice. On the Sony, you can't do that. You just have to imagine that you're in the right place, which I really hate. But the video on the Sony is a little bit better than on the Canon. However, I don't really seem to notice the difference that much, but a lot of like really nitpicky videographers like the Sony a little bit more. One other thing that's nice and is really, really nice for beginners is on the Canon, you can actually tap the screen and it will focus. Whereas on the Sony, you actually tap the button and it focuses. And you have to wait for these little green dots to catch the image. So probably gonna be a little bit easier for you to use a Canon than it is for you to use a Sony. However, I do feel like once you get the Sony, like once you get the Sony down, is what I wanna say, it, it's super, super easy to use. So you can't really go wrong with either one. There's probably a couple cheaper options to go with the Canon as well. The Sony is a little bit more expensive. Um, and this is actually a Sigma lens. So not as expensive as the Zeiss lens. And as you guys can see, the footage on this was insane. So I mean, literally everything before this was on this. And you can't really notice the difference all that much. However, you would notice a huge difference if everything we just did was on an iPhone. So here is, in my opinion, the best corner of my gym. So the reason that this corner works really, really well is because the light is pretty low. I also have some, uh, some paper on the windows because, you know, we're not really supposed to be open. <laughs> but that's also helping us right now, right? And then even if the paper wasn't up, this would still be the darkest area of the gym. And because it's dark, it's getting more shadow 
on the muscle tone that I have. So if I have bigger ab muscles, you're gonna see better shading underneath, and it's basically just because of the light that's coming in. Now, if I walk over here, we walk this way, we walk this way, you're probably starting to see the lighting start to go away a little bit. It's gonna get worse, it's gonna get worse. This is the open part of the gym, the biggest part of the gym. Now we're getting to, this, to the area now where it's not as good. And then I think over here, it actually gets a little bit worse because now this is where the most light comes in. So right here should probably be the worst lighting. Do you agree, cameraman? It's pretty bad. So I wouldn't shoot a video right here because, I mean, even though the movement will be great, you're just not gonna really get that wow factor when you post it. So you want everyone to really, really like look at someone's body in that post and be like, oh my God, what's that? And then they look at it and then hopefully they get intrigued by the actual caption of the post and then eventually get tied into whatever you wanna talk about or whatever that, just whatever that post is about in general. So what I would do is come over here. <clears throat> and you have this awesome lighting. So now you see someone talking. It's the same person, but that person over there looks a little bit closer to some other people you've seen before. This person over here looks pretty freaking lean, <laughs> right? So then you look at that, you're like, oh my God, who's this guy? What does he have to say, right? And then when I move around, like a pull up for instance, it looks way better over here. You can see pretty much every single part of your body and there's really no manipulation except for light. You know what's great about light? It's free. <laughs> All you have to do is move around and you guys can find the best lighting in the gym. You know what helps a lot as well is when you're in a dark area of a gym, you're like, okay, this is gonna be the good spot. You wanna find that piece of light from overhead that comes down because it creates better shading. This area works really well because there's a light just above my head. There's also another long light right here, which, gives you pretty good lighting as well going this way. So you guys will see I look pretty good right here, but not as good once I start to go out this way because there's just a lot more lighting. <clears throat> so finding good lighting in the gym is gonna consist of you finding a darker area, hopefully getting a light overhead. And then as we do the movement, let's talk about two different ways that you can do the movement that will be good and another way that will be very, very bad. So if I start to do this movement, let's say I do, let's say I do some pull-ups <clears throat> and you guys stand really far away, right there. And I'm like, hey, can you film me do a set of pull-ups? And I'm right here. <laughs> Not that exciting. I post it on Instagram, nobody likes it, nobody cares. Why is that? because you can't really focus on my best attributes. You're not really seeing what's getting activated. What is he doing that's making that movement so freaking cool, all right? I know this seems very elementary, but a lot of people, they're filming stuff and they're not really getting in there like we talked about with the glutes and the legs and all that stuff on the squat. Now, I'm gonna have my cameraman do a really sexy style video. I'm gonna do the same pull up, except now, you're gonna feel like you're there. You're gonna feel like, man, this guy looks awesome. Man, I wanna do some freaking pull-ups right now. All right, let's see what that looks like. <clears throat> I'm gonna add a little sexy too and put some weight on the bar. <clears throat> when I say on the bar, I mean my hips. <clears throat> Shit, this has to go here. All right, you ready? Make me look good. Can you guys see a difference on that? Now, another thing about moving around and getting the good angles, it's free, right? It's another free thing that we can do to make ourselves look absolutely amazing, right? We are like a very expensive billboard that you have on the side of the road. It's like, buy Marlboro cigarettes, you know, watch this movie. That cost them like 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars to put that ad on the side of the road and your thumbnail on your Instagram, on your TikTok, on your Facebook, whatever it is, your clickbait, right? We'll call it clickbait instead of a thumbnail, your YouTube channel like this. Um, that is just the manipulation of the camera some lighting, and then just finding 
your best angle, right? And then just picking throughout that video the best part of it that you can make the clickbait, right? And what I like about what we're doing right now is we're not even talking about Photoshop or any of that stuff that most people do and are kind of lying. We're doing all natural stuff, just lighting, just angles, it's free, and it's gonna help your business so, so much. It's gonna help people trust you more, it's gonna help people connect to you more. I mean, you connected more to that second video than the first one, am I right? There's a reason that having some, like paying someone to take the video makes a difference. One, getting a nice camera helps a lot, but the person using it helps more. It is the, what is it, what's, what's the saying? It's, it's the Indian, not the bow. It's the Indian, not the arrow, right? It's the Indian, the person behind the camera is the most important thing, right? You can have all this fun stuff and you can still mess up the video. So let's just make sure that we have all the stuff that we talked about a little while ago. We have all these little things that we just talked about now and we're getting to a little bit more here in a minute. That was everything that you need to know inside the gym. So what you're gonna be looking for is the best areas of the gym to get the best lighting. You guys wanna make sure that they can see the entire movement. I've had people in my gym that work for me behind the desk. We make videos for the Chalk Performance Training Instagram. And a lot of times when they do something wrong, usually what I'm mad about is the fact that they didn't have the entire person in the video. They didn't have the entire bar in the video. So when they're talking about something, you can't really get the entire movement as a whole. Maybe they're not speaking that well. Maybe they're not in good lighting in the room. There's a bunch of different things that we talked about already inside the gym that I'm looking for personally that when it gets posted, gets the most engagement absolutely possible. We also talked about the different types of cameras. We have the Sony camera, we have the Canon camera. There's different brands out there, absolutely. There's different lenses out there, absolutely. However, the ones that I talked about are probably gonna be the most popular ones, the most familiar ones with everybody else who's using that type of equipment and doing fitness stuff. Um, and then on top of that, they're kind of the easier ones to use, point and shoot style stuff. And unless you have a full-time photographer, it's gonna be nice to have one of those types of cameras because it's very, very point and shoot. And as you guys heard from Emily, who works the front desk at my gym, she's like, yeah, it's very, very easy to use. And you know, she does the majority of the videos that you guys see on the Chalk Instagram. Now, let's talk about when you actually post it. So when you post it, that is the real most important time. So let's just look at a couple of thumbnails we have on my Instagram here. Obviously, I'm looking for the best moments all the time. So like on this particular video here, I'm doing one-legged squats. If you guys watch me do this video, there's a lot of great moments in this video that I could hit it, but I wanna make sure that you can see the whole movement, and I wanna make sure that you can see the one part of this video that's most important, which is growing your glutes. So with that being said, I nailed it right there. So you can see the entire bar, you can see my front leg, you can see my back leg, but my glutes are pretty intensified in this thumbnail. We have this deadlift here, and you can see all the plates I'm totally locked out. You can see the majority of my body, and that's really important. Um, so I thought about actually having this a little bit more focused. You can see a little bit more of my body, but I realized that the amount of weight on the bar is really, really impressive, and people are gonna wanna see that, and they're gonna connect with that more than they probably would aesthetically just body stuff, because I already have a lot of stuff like that. So with that being said, I got the whole bar in there, and I got as much as possible going on in that particular video. This one here, we have a very unique movement. And again, I'm in a position of that movement that lets you say, hey, what is that? I've never seen that before. But there's different parts of this movement that I could have done where you wouldn't have noticed that. Then all these other movements here, we have you know, a shoulder movement. I'm obviously in the most flexed position of it. That makes a huge difference. The kettlebell swing, we've all seen kettlebell swings, but just in this vibe right here, you actually have a little bit of my abs. I'm totally locked out. The kettlebell's shooting out. You have good lighting here. This is that one area in my gym with a steel wall. It's just a really great thumbnail to pick. One right next to it, you know, we're on this bench. Let's see if we can get some, some, some energy here. <laughs> so I put my feet here, you go back. For those of you who've never seen this before, it's pretty cool. But I have all these captions going. I wanted to make sure that I didn't necessarily have a caption that was in the way, and I wanted to be in a position that got people's attention. So that's what we're talking about here. That's, that's what we're looking for when we pick the thumbnail. Statistically speaking, right now on Instagram, you have about a 1.3 second chance to get somebody's attention. So the thumbnail is gonna be that very first like half a second that they see before the video even hits. So the thumbnail, super, super important. 
And then as the video goes, you have about three seconds to actually grab them and fully engage with them. So if the first like two to three seconds is not very exciting, you don't have anything really cool going on, you're gonna get cut. They're gonna keep on cruising on by. So with that being said, I can't tell you how many times I see a video where the first second is like, they're just sitting there paused and then they start talking. So it, just in that one split second, they just scroll right on by. Another time I'll see people that are like, you know, you know, they're getting situated or something and then they turn around and the camera's there or they're at a frame and then they walk into the frame and then start doing the, you know, a heavy snatch or a deadlift or something like that. Just start it as you're deadlifting. That's what everybody wants to see, right? You don't have time. No one's gonna sit there. I mean, people are trying to get through so many people that they follow. Nobody wants to watch someone like walk out of frame, walk into frame for like 10 seconds before they lift the bar. It's not gonna happen, right? So you guys have to think about that when you do it. Also, like we talked about inside the gym, you're filming from far away. You're not getting in there and like showing all the movements. And like what that really does is like, I mean, imagine being in the movie theater, right? And you're watching a movie getting filmed from far away versus like, you know, you're watching a scary movie and all of a sudden the ghost is like right there. You know what I mean? Like that makes a huge difference. If you saw the ghost from a fucking mile away, not gonna be nearly as scary. And when you wanna be impressed with someone's physique when there's so many people on Instagram doing a lot of fitness things, you gotta get in there. You gotta feel like you're with that person. You wanna connect with that person. Hopefully you're connecting with me right now. Um, so let's, let's go over to the chalk Instagram real quick. Keep in mind, I do not make every single one of these. I make a lot of them, but my, uh, my, some of my employees make them as well. So I don't always get the best thumbnails and everything that I would want. This particular one right here, this guy's head's missing. Not super stoked on that, but it is in the middle of a very dynamic movement. He's in the air, it's kind of cool. I'll let it slide, but definitely not ideal. This one right here, you know, we have a guy doing a row. I think the reason that they picked this one is because we don't really have anything like that on here. So I'm cool with it. I do wish that you could see a little bit more of his arm, probably a little bit more highlights of his body because if you're on my Instagram right now for the gym, that's probably not gonna stand out to you. However, you see that other one that I posted on my Instagram, that one kind of stands out and it makes me wanna check it out. So do these professional ones where my friend Nick right now, who's doing the video right now, he made these sweet shots. And what you can do is you can check the analytics on these things. So let's just look at something like this. We can click insights. We have 440 bookmarks, right? So that means 440 people went to this, looked at it and said, man, I really wanna do this workout and they bookmarked it. Now we can also see something like this, a movement tutorial video. I'll hit it, got 500 bookmarks. People really like this one. And with this, I have clothes on, I'm just look like I'm going over a movement. Here's another one right next to it. Let's check it out. 387, people didn't care so much about this one. And these are things that you can do to kind of like start to see what your people really like. Now, I haven't gone through any of these. This is our first time doing it together, but let's just go ahead and look at this one again. This is a different one, 429. Four to 500 is what we're looking for on my particular page for this. But I do have some that hit like over a thousand. And then we can go to the reels and some reels have almost north of 20,000 and some of them have less than 10,000. And typically you can put that together with, this one has, if you want bigger glutes, that right there probably got this video an extra 10,000 more than these other ones just because it has a call to action on the actual video frame. And whenever you have zoomed in muscles and you can see people's bodies, you tend to get higher views as well. Let's look at another call to action. So we have call to action here, call to action here. These have by far more, more views than everything else. Having a call to action is really, really big. Where do you get these calls of action? You can get these in making reels. You can get these in making TikTok videos. And then if you get really up close and personal with people, that'll give you higher views as well. Or if you have a unique movement. Right here, we got the unique movement. You're standing on a plate. People can't really see how heavy it is, but you do have the red plate, so now you're kind of interested. Grabs your attention, 30,000 views. Right here, I got my shirt off. Whenever you have me with your shirt off, you always have way more views, 60,000, 100,000. Those are big, big time views. So you're always gonna have more with me on here than everybody else, but you're, you've also, we've also had me on here 
not with my shirt off, not as many views. So now we have a whole bunch of different things that help us get a lot of different views. Now, we also have regular posts, we have reels, we have IGTVs, and when it comes to IGTV, this is something that is gonna be longer than a minute long. So when your video is longer than a minute, you can get a lot of information out. You're not gonna get as many views right out the gate, so don't get bummed about that. A lot of people will post an IGTV and they're like, oh my God, I got half as many views as something else, but it lives longer on the feed and you're gonna notice that over time, you're gonna have a lot more views over time with the IGTV. And it gives you more time to connect with your audience and tell them a lot of the things that you're really, really passionate about. I can tell you right now, if you wanna make a really good one minute video, it's probably gonna take you about 10 takes to do. <laughs> because getting all that information in one minute is really, really hard. So there's gonna be a lot of videos that you're gonna to wanna to make a full IGTV for. Then what it really comes down to is also understanding the trends of Instagram. So Instagram right now really wants to favor Reels because they wanna take over the audience from TikTok. So what they're gonna do with that is automatically give you better reach with that than they would with regular videos. Now, Chalk Formance Training has 56,000 followers. If I post a Reel right now, it's gonna get between like 10,000 and 100,000 views. That's insane engagement. And that's free engagement from Instagram because they don't like TikTok. <laughs> so they're just giving me that, that extra engagement. So if you guys are not taking advantage of Reels right now, and it's, it's January 2021, 2021, yes. <laughs> it's January 2021 when we're playing this right now. So Reels right now, super, super hot. You guys wanna take advantage of the trends, right? So make sure you get a good camera. Make sure you guys get good lighting. Make sure you guys pick a good thumbnail. Make sure that everything that you have at your disposal, you guys are doing correctly. Then, just as important as the thumbnail is the first sentence, right? The most important things when it comes to posting, when it comes to marketing, is hook, story, offer, right? Hook gets them tied in, story makes them connect with you, the offer is something that you offer at the end to help them out, right? It's gonna be nutrition, it's gonna be coaching, like, you know, it's gonna be workouts, it's gonna be tips on whatever you want to be. It's gonna be talking about your business. So that's what this is all about, is improving your content so that your business is better, so your brand is better, so your Instagram is better. Maybe you don't know what you wanna do yet, but you wanna build yourself so that you're better in the future. So, with that being said, the first sentence is huge. Uh, just like the, those call to actions on these reels got me more views, having a good first sentence is gonna get me more reads. <clears throat> so once you get more reads, that's when you hook people in a little bit more, you get them to trust you a little bit more, and you can provide them with a story and then an offer. So good hooks. Let's go, let's see what we have here to see. I just, I just, I just messed up the way I said that. But um, So let's just go with the first sentence on this one right here. Do you follow the full body aesthetics program on our mobile app? So what happened is I hooked them in with this, four exercises to grow your glutes that you're not doing, right? What am I not doing? So I wanna look at these movements. I'm already hooked now, right? If I didn't put these here, I would probably make that the first sentence, but I'm hooked right away. So I just wanna know like, where can I find these movements? So that's the first sentence. Do you follow the full body aesthetics program on the mobile app? Then I talk about everything that that mobile app will do for you and where you can buy it. This is one of the best reels that I have. It has a call to action here instead of here, but now let's look at a post that doesn't have a call to action on the actual video. So this one right here, me with my shirt off. There's a lot of people with their shirt off, but this one has 650 likes, only has 43 bookmarks. There's really no reason to really bookmark this. It's not a workout or anything like that. But almost 700 likes on a 56,000 Instagram is pretty damn good. And the first sentence, we all have different goals and that's exactly why I have five daily programs, right? I think a lot of people look at this Instagram, they probably think it's all about strength and conditioning stuff. We want them to know that we have different programs. So you show a body type, hopefully that hooks with some certain people, that's the hook. The story is we have five different programs and here's what they all entail and then the offer is gonna be at the end of that post. Hook, story, offer, that's all, I, that's all I can say is hook, story, and offer, and then look at your top 100 people. Your top 100 is exactly who you wanna be like, it's who you wanna model like, 
you guys want to have an Instagram potentially like mine or even someone else who has millions of followers, which doesn't always matter, by the way, we'll get to that. But yeah, let's look at, um, let's look at maybe one other one. Let's see what I can find here. Here's a pretty good one. We got a girl doing a workout. She looks great. Let's see what we got on bookmarks on her. 226, not the highest, but it has a very high like. It has more likes than mine. Let's see what we got for the first line. And I'm just winging this right now. Our bodywork program is designed for anyone, anytime. And we have someone who's not me on the Instagram doing a really good job. Yes, she's very, very attractive. <laughs> but it talks about a very basic bodyweight workout. And the first line is pretty good. Bodywork program. What is the bodywork program? That's the hook. Then the story is the workout. Then the offer is to try us out anytime for a one week free trial. Check out the link in our bio, right? I always have the link in our bio. I, I saw someone one time, they were talking about a workout. They never said link in bio, but they had a shirt on that said link in bio. I thought that was hysterical. Um, That's just a side story. <clears throat> so yeah, those are, those are some of the, uh, the little things that a lot of people don't think about when they're on their Instagram account when they're creating posts. I can't tell you how many times I see people do a post where they don't even, I can tell for sure they didn't even look at the thumbnail, they just posted it. So when they're looking on their feed, you have to imagine that your feed on your Instagram is literally, it's like a job interview, right? It's almost like, it, it's like you gotta show up and you wanna look really, really good. So someone finds your page for the first time, right? Like growing followers is really, really hard because they find one post that went viral and now they go to your page and now they have the opportunity to follow you, but they're only gonna follow you if everything there is like relatable to them. So they're looking for a good thumbnail to tie them in, the hook, and then they wanna read something really cool, the story, to pull them in, and then if you have a good offer, they might check it out. And that's where you start to build, build your audience. That's, like, that's the most important part of this whole thing. So make sure you guys have great posts. And even if it's a temporary post, you see a lot of people post stuff and they take it down. And there's a good reason for that because it's not congruent with the rest of their Instagram account. So maybe you know, they'll post like the winners of some challenge uh, and then they'll take them down a little bit later or they'll post something that's temporary like, hey, like the last day to sign up for my thing is in the next 24 hours and then they'll take that down later. Make sure that your story not your story, your, your page, your grid, I should say on Instagram or TikTok or any other platform is very congruent. Everything is very, very cohesive, has a good flow to it. They know what you're about when they get there. They have to know what you're about when they get there. I can't tell you how many people, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to my social media agency. I'll, I'll go to someone's profile because they want help with their Instagram account, with their, with their, um, with their content. And I don't really know what they're about. You know, they post, them eating out, they post a workout that they're doing, they post you know, this place they went to on vacation, they post a picture of their dog, they post you know, something funny that happened with their friends. And yes, I get it, it's your Instagram account, you really want your entire life on there, but there are certain things that belong in certain places. Like to have that permanently on your feed when someone comes to find you and that is what they see, that's their first impression, it's really, really tough to grow followers that way. Now, I can put, a ridiculous video in my story that has nothing to do with my page and it's a little bit more relatable. It's only a 24 hour thing and then it's gone. It brings me tighter to my personal audience and it is, it's, stories are just more casual. But I want my page to for sure be professional, right? Like it's like, I almost feel like your story is your tuxedo and then under the tuxedo you can have all sorts of fucked up tattoos and different things. <laughs> and that's your story. Like your story is like all the shit that's underneath you know, all the skeletons in your closet, all the, all the flaws that we all have as individuals, that can go in your story. But you want everyone to see the tuxedo as you walk in, nice clean cut, shaved, all the good things. That's what the page is all about. So at this point, guys, we've talked about a whole bunch of different things. The last thing that we need to talk about is which platform is for you, which one should you start on, which one should you concentrate on. There's so many platforms, I just don't know what to do. And the answer, is whichever one that you really feel connected to, whichever one, I think that everyone right now, let's say you only have like a couple hundred followers on all the platforms, but maybe one of them you have like a thousand. Like I would say right now, the easiest platform to start on by far is gonna be TikTok. 
because TikTok has the ability to make things go viral very, very fast. And I've only been using it for a month and I have well over 25,000 followers now and I rarely use it. However, I've been on Instagram for years and I only have a few hundred thousand followers on there. So with that being said, you can build a quick following on there and then migrate them to your other platforms. YouTube is gonna be one of the harder ones because there's a lot of competition on YouTube. Um, a podcast is a great thing to start because it connects you with other people and gets you some information that you probably wouldn't have ever heard before without connecting with that person. So I do love podcasts, but it's hard to grow on there as well because a lot of people who are worth talking to aren't gonna wanna talk to you because you don't have a, a good list of people that you've already talked to. So I would probably start probably on TikTok. I would definitely have an Instagram account as, as well. The videos that you make on there, I would shove over. I would start to kind of split that up and then just start chopping it for other things. If you have something good that you said, you can put it on Twitter and then take that quote and post it on something else. Um, or you can just go one single route and make all long form content and then chop it up into single form content. That's the, that's the great thing about YouTube is you could have this hour long video and then you can chop up really great, you know, 30 to 60 second pieces, put it on Instagram, put it on TikTok, take a cool quote, put it on Twitter. That's how all this stuff goes. That's the Gary Vee uh, and a lot of like the really big content guys. They always say start big and then, just, and then just chop things down for the other channels. But right now, I just wanna make sure that you guys have the ability to create the best content possible. So please do a couple things for me. Get a good camera, <laughs> all right? Find good lighting if you wanna be in the fitness industry and you wanna do you know, cool workout videos and talk about nutrition and talk about, I mean, even if you talk about nutrition, you're gonna to wanna to look good with your shirt off in your kitchen or in the gym. Uh, and if you're doing workout videos, you wanna make sure you're looking good inside the gym or wherever you are. Even if you're outside, there is gonna be some lighting manipulation. Make sure you guys also have good music. Music is massive. There's so many videos out there that have bad music in the background and it makes you not wanna to listen to it right away. Or I've had people comment on my videos. They were like, came here for the, they're like, came here for the video, stayed for the music. People have commented on, on my videos like that. So it's a big thing to have great music. That's kind of how TikTok was built. It was built off of really cool music. Obviously dancing is a cool thing too, but that comes with the music. And then also guys, make sure the video is to the point, it's quick. Do not leave like a second of lag time. Do not leave a second of lag time at the end of the video. Just like make the video, you always want the video to be as short as absolutely possible. And if you're ever gonna run an ad campaign, it's gotta be like 10 seconds or less. Or that first three to five seconds needs to pull them in so, so aggressively that you can talk for a little bit longer. As you guys start to see great ad videos, you guys start to see great you know, exercise videos that you love so, so much, no matter which platform you're on, I want you to start bookmarking them and saving them. I want you guys to start understanding that these are your top 100 people that you wanna be like and you wanna study these videos. If you see an a hysterical ad, I've seen super funny ads for random things like deodorant. I saw a deodorant commercial the other day that was so funny that I bookmarked it and I was like, man, I wanna have a commercial like this one day. I wanna have an ad like this one day about one of my programs. And it won't be exactly the same, but I like the style of it. So I want you guys to literally start loving other people's ads, start loving other people's videos, start realizing that like, this isn't spam anymore, it's what you, know, you wanna put out there, so you have to actually start liking that stuff and start studying that stuff and then start creating content that's either equal or better. So that's what really makes the difference between a great content creator and a mediocre content creator or a bad content creator. You know, there's a lot of times that you start you know, wanting to post a video. I can't tell you how many times it has taken me well over an hour, maybe even two hours sometimes, just to find a good thumbnail, make a good video, make a good caption. So I've had captions for sure take me over an hour, all the time, all the time. And it's important to me. Like, I think it's more important for you to post one dope photo like every three days or dope video like every three days than it is for you to do a dope video and then like two mediocre videos or even like maybe a bad video and then another good one and then maybe a bad one and then another good one. Like I would say it's more important to have good stuff than it is to have a plethora of stuff where like only 20% of it's good and 80% of it's bad. And I've heard other people say the opposite where it's like just get as much content out there as possible but I disagree because I think they're gonna go to your page and check it out and they're gonna be like, man, I'm not really sure. So there is two different ways to go about that. I think that putting out more content could help you find who you are. Maybe right now you don't know who you are and what you wanna represent 
Then I say put some more content out there and figure out what people like. Start looking at the analytics of all the photos, right? Like we just looked at. But if you know what you're all about, you already know the niche that you want to go into, you know exactly where you want to dive in, make sure your shit is good. Stop putting stuff out there that's mediocre. Don't even write it if you don't have a good caption. Don't post it if you don't have a good clip, if you don't have a good thumbnail. Like make sure all the things are in line. Make sure you have all the best things in line. Make sure that you're ready to do this damn thing. Um, because when it comes time to you being like, why am I not growing? Why is this not happening? Why is that not happening? It's because you haven't put the time in. And I know it's, it's shitty to hear, but it's the reality. Like I can't tell you how many times, like every day I just like don't want to make content. But like I'm excited to post the content that I post, but like finding the caption, finding the thumbnail, cutting the video, like if I want to do a TikTok and like adding all of those call to actions on there, it's like, it's really hard. It's really time consuming. And yeah, it can, it can burn you out for sure. But the, the upsides are amazing. I get to do what I love to do every single day. Yes, I get agitated at certain times, but like I can't imagine what else I'd want to do. So I hope that this helps so many of you guys out there. I know that a lot of people ask me about content. They ask me about what cameras I'm using. Uh, they want to know like what does better than other things. And I really think that this video, it didn't capture every single little thing, um, but it captured all the most important things. I think this is the highlights. Uh, this is the cliff note. This is the highlights. This is the best of making content in my, in my opinion. So make sure you guys share this with your friends. Make sure you guys save this. Make sure you watch it more than once. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure that, yeah, make sure that you absolutely love this video. Make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe and make sure you come back for more. I'll see you guys soon. Oh, no, yeah.